Hello everyone, my name is Amit Banerjee. Thank you for joining my session, SQL Server Licensing Demystified. Uh, I am responsible for the on-premises database engine, SQL Server running on virtual machines, and Azure SQL Edge in the Microsoft Azure Data Engineering team. Today in my session, I'm going to help clarify a few of the common questions that I get about SQL Server licensing and how it applies to when you move your uh, SQL servers into virtual machines or the Azure SQL family uh, in Azure. So let's first look at what are the different editions of SQL Server. SQL Server is offered in uh, four main editions, the Enterprise Edition and Standard Edition, which need to be licensed. Express Edition is free for commercial use, uh, but limited by features and the scale. Uh, and Developer Edition, which is the same as Enterprise Edition, but the Developer Edition cannot be used for any production applications. So how do you actually license a SQL Server? You could, today, with SQL Server 2019, you can actually run SQL Server on a physical host or what we call bare metal machines, or you can run it on a virtual machine. It could be uh, on Hyper-V, it could be on VMware, or it could be on any other virtualization platform that you choose uh, that can run SQL Server. Uh, or you can even run it in container starting with SQL Server 2017. So if you have a SQL Server instance, if you're running it on a bare metal machine or a physical server, you license SQL Server using the physical cores of the machine. If you're running on a virtual machine, then you license the SQL Server virtual machine based on the virtual machine cores. And if you're running a container, then you license the uh, SQL Server container based on the virtual cores or the virtual CPUs assigned to the container. And the way this works is, uh, if you have a physical server model, let's say your server has six cores, as you see in the illustration over here, um, you would uh, buy uh, a pack of a SQL Server license, which has two cores, so you'll need to buy three packs, and that would in total give you uh, six cores to license your physical server, which is running uh, six physical cores. The same applies if you're running a uh, you know, SQL Server uh, on a virtual machine or another physical machine. So let's take this example where you have a physical server that is running a uh, SQL Server database engine and you have another physical server that is running uh, reporting services. In both these scenarios, you will actually have to run uh, six cores for the first server and six cores for the second server. So in total, you would need uh, 12 cores. If both of these were virtual machines, you would need still 12 cores because you have to license by the virtual cores. Now, uh, let's go look at the virtual core example. Now, in this case, you actually have one physical machine that has uh, three different uh, uh, virtual machines. Now, each of them is running a SQL Server 2019 virtual machine. And one of them has two virtual cores, the other one has four virtual cores, and the last one has six virtual cores. Uh, in this case, the minimum number of licenses that you can assign to a virtual machine is four. So in, in total, you would need 14 SQL Server licenses or 14 SQL Server core licenses to run all the three virtual machines. Uh, the same applies to containers. Uh, if you have uh, uh, three different containers, one of them running two virtual CPUs, the second one running four virtual CPUs, and the last one running six virtual CPUs, you would need to license it with 14 cores of SQL Server licenses. So, in short, the number of physical cores you have for physical machines, the number of virtual cores you have for virtual machines, and the number of virtual CPUs you have for your containers. Whether you call it virtual CPUs, whether you call it virtual cores, it is basically the number of computing units, whether it is threads or whether it is CPUs, uh, that is assigned to the virtual machine or container determines the number of SQL Server licenses you need. And uh, in terms of uh, licensing, SQL Server licensing model holds true uh, starting from 2019 all the way down to any SQL Server instance that you have. So if you have, let's say, a SQL Server 2019 license and you want to apply it on SQL Server 2017 or a SQL Server 2016 instance, the same licensing rules would hold true. So how does it actually work for the new feature big data cluster that was introduced in uh, SQL Server 2019. So let's have a look. So first, you would have a SQL Server uh, Enterprise Edition or a Standard Edition of the head node. Uh, the same type of licensing rules apply. 
you would have to license by the cores. Uh, you could use uh, core-based licenses or you could use uh, subscription-based licenses and uh, that would cover the master instance, which is uh, what you see me hovering on to, uh, with my pointer on. Uh, then you have uh, multiple different um, components, which are the compute pool, the storage pool, and the data pools. Uh, these are licensed based on SQL Server Big Data Node Core subscriptions. Uh, these are priced at $200 annually, and uh, you can go ahead and license them as you see fit based on your deployment topology. Now, one of the benefits that we're adding uh, is for software assurance customers, which I'll cover in my later slides what software assurance actually means, uh, software assurance customers get eight free big data cores uh, for every enterprise edition core that is deployed in the master. So if you have one core in the master, you get eight cores free here. If you have one core in standard, it's a one is to one mapping. So if you have one core of standard, you get one core of uh, big data cluster core. So how do you actually reduce your licensing costs? And what's the real benefit if you actually have software assurance? Software Assurance is a licensing construct where customers can choose to pay an annual fee to Microsoft to reduce uh, their licensing spend. And why do I say reduce? Because Software Assurance gives you the host of benefits that you see in the table uh, in front of you. What it actually does for you is it reduces the per core cost by allowing you to deploy more and more SQL servers in different configurations where uh, a number of the high availability or disaster recovery licenses are free, which means with software assurance, you're paying less for the total number of SQL Server cores that you've deployed. Uh, it's an annual um, subscription price. Uh, you can either choose to get software assurance benefits through your SQL Server licenses that you buy and covering those software assurance, or you can buy SQL Server subscription licenses where you pay for your licenses yearly and they also have software assurance benefits associated with them. The software assurance benefits in both types of licenses are the same, uh, and uh, one of them, in one of the models, which is the license model, where you buy licenses and cover them with software assurance, you own the licenses uh, in, the so in the SQL Server subscription model, uh, you're not owning the licenses, you're renting them. Think of, them, uh, think of it as a lease model. Um, both have its pros and cons, and it depends on your business needs, and the budgets that you want to manage, uh, which helps you determine whether you need to go for a perpetual licensing model or a subscription model of licensing. So some of the new benefits, I talked about the big data core entitlement benefit in the previous slide. Uh, one of the new benefits that we added is the failover service for disaster recovery. What this does for you is it allows you to cover another SQL Server um, disaster recovery replica uh, which is running SQL Server 2019 or below uh, with uh, free licenses if your primary is covered with software assurance. Similarly, if your primary is covered with software assurance licenses, you also get another SQL Server core running in Azure. I'll describe the scenarios and the topologies in detail in, in the following slides, but these are two new benefits that were added. Uh, if you're a software assurance customer or a SQL Server subscription licensing customers and then all the benefits apart from the top three that you see which are which are listed in gray are all benefits that you have today these are not new benefits these are benefits that you have today so you have the ability to uh, get free cores if you're running a SQL server uh, instance with the primary replica covered with software assurance you actually get um, a high availability replica for free you could choose to use that high availability replica core for true high availability or disaster recovery. It is entirely dependent on you. The second is uh, the unlimited virtualization. Uh, this is a pretty cool benefit. I'll talk about this in detail in the next slide. Uh, you have the ability as an enterprise edition software assurance customer to run Power BI report server. Uh, you get uh, machine learning server for Hadoop uh, capabilities. You also get license mobility, which essentially means that you can actually take one SQL Server license that is running on server A, shut that down, and move that license over as many number of times to another machine. So in, especially in highly virtualized environments, this is a great benefit to have when you're shutting down VMs and 
and switching on other VMs to run another SQL Server instance. Uh, this is a great benefit to optimize for cost. At the same time, uh, reusing your licenses for additional VMs when previous uh, replicas, VMs, uh, or hardware is decommissioned. Uh, the other is uh, this is a highly leveraged benefit. If you have software assurance, you can actually take those licenses and move them into uh, the cloud uh, under license mobility. Uh, we will talk about a program called Azure Hybrid Benefit, which gives you a lot of benefits as a SQL Server customer in the entire Azure SQL family, whether you're running Azure SQL database, whether you're running Azure SQL VMs, or you're running uh, uh, Azure SQL Managed Instance, it doesn't really matter because your SQL Server licenses gives you a number of benefits in each of these targets. Uh, and uh, the last is uh, the benefits that you get for appliances and the server cloud enrollment. So let's look at what um, unlimited vir uh, virtualization actually means. So if you have SQL Server Enterprise licenses, which are covered by Software Assurance, um, you get unlimited virtualization rights. What does that actually mean? Um, unlimited sounds really nice. Um, but uh, this benefit is specifically geared towards environments which are running virtualization. Um, so if you have a physical core uh, licenses for, let's say in this illustration, you have 12 physical cores uh, and you have uh, a machine that is running um, six cores of physical license and there's another physical machine which is running another six cores. So in total, you have 12 cores. Now, inside those physical machines, you can enable any virtualization technology that will support SQL Server, and you can deploy as many number of SQL VMs in there with as many number of virtual cores. If you remember from the previous slide, um, you did not have the ability to license a SQL Server virtual machine by the physical cores uh, once you started using either a SQL Server virtual machine or a SQL Server container. You had to license by the virtual cores assigned to the container or VM. In this case, you can deploy as many number of virtual machines. So in, if these 12 cores are present, you can deploy, in this case, you can see four at the top or at the bottom, eight multiplied by six, which is 48 virtual cores, but you only pay for 12 virtual cores. This is only applicable if you have enterprise edition with software assurance. Um, what you need to take care of from a technology standpoint is um, you should only over provision your VMs in such a manner that not everything reaches 100% CPU usage. So in this case, you have two virtual machines um, which are using uh, 12 cores each. So if both of them, let's take this example, the first two, um, if both of them reach 100% CPU usage, that's not a problem. But if the third one that you deployed reaches 100% CPU usage at the same time, then you're gonna lead, it's gonna lead to starvation or noisy neighbor problems where you will have three of these VMs compute, competing for resources uh, or for the same set of resources at the same time. With the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, you're just going to compound the problem. So as long as you are over-provisioning with a educated um, view of what your resource usage looks like and how your VMs peak and uh, how your peaks and averages differ over a period of time. Uh, a lot of our customers leverage this benefit in a, in a very, very uh, robust and an optimized manner to essentially uh, lower their cost of ownership for SQL Server. This is a very popular benefit among software assurance customers, and we have seen this leverage multiple times for various different components of SQL Server. Um, now, how does it work in containers? It works in the exact same way. You have two physical machines deploying um, 12 cores of uh, uh, SQL Server, you can deploy as many number of containers you want on it uh, without any issue. In this scenario, you are actually running eight containers with four uh, V cores each, which is basically 32 Enterprise Edition uh, containers, 32 cores of Enterprise Edition containers, but licensed using 12 physical cores of SQL Server license. Again, this benefit only applies if you have uh, SQL Enterprise licenses, SQL Enterprise core licenses covered with software assurance. So um, how does this uh, pan out? Basically, 
any scenario where you're creating a lot of VMs, you're destroying a lot of VMs, uh, or you have a lot of VMs that don't really reach peak usage, are flat at, let's say, uh, you know, under 50%, you can keep over-provisioning uh, by a lot. So if you have 12 cores and you know that all your VMs uh, run below 50% CPU usage all the time, then at a minimum, you can deploy 24 cores or virtual cores worth of containers or VMs in those physical machines. And that will give you uh, a 100% over-provisioning or 100% over-provisioned capacity uh, without having to incur additional licensing costs. So let's look at another scenario. Uh, this is the scenario I talked about, which was uh, new, basically the high availability and disaster recovery benefit. Uh, we announced this benefit um, when we launched SQL Server 2019. Uh, however, a common question that we get all the time is, is this applicable for 2019 uh, only? The answer is no. This benefit is applicable to any SQL Server license that is covered with software assurance and for any release of SQL Server. So what does this mean is basically you could have a SQL Server which is covered uh, with, uh, with software assurance and you could basically cover the primary replica and after that you would get a core on a failover replica which is passive uh, for high availability. This benefit you already had uh, when you had SQL Server uh, licenses covered with software assurance. Uh, then you have a new benefit, which is basically your disaster recovery replica, which is another VM. You get another core for free. And the third one is when you have the disaster rep replica in Azure, in an Azure VM. So if you have one core and you have a certain topology, you can actually get three free cores of SQL Server. And what is a passive replica? A passive replica is any replica that is not serving any production application or any users for any read write or read requests. What are the permissions uh, that uh, you can provide? You can provide read write, you can provide read permissions, you can provide any permissions, but you need to ensure that the replicas are not used for any production uh, applications or serving any users that are performing reads or writes against the uh, databases hosted on the passive replicas. So the next obvious question would be, what operations do you allow in the passive replica? In the passive replica, you, uh, you, as you see on the screen, you basically allow a few very uh, specific set of uh, actions. We support uh, database consistency checks. You do not have to license if you're just doing consistency checks on those VMs. Uh, you can support log backups and full backups, so you can back up your databases from the secondary replicas. You can monitor your uh, secondary replicas uh, without incurring additional licensing costs, which means you can check for resource usage like high CPU, uh, high memory usage, or uh, have any monitoring application connect to it and pull any monitoring data from the SQL Server instances. And uh, the last one, which is uh, very, very important, the, ve the very reason why you've set up HA and DR for a SQL Server VM is because you want to test uh, high availability and disaster recovery through DR drills. Um, whenever you do these DR drills for brief moments, you'd actually fail over um, your primary instance to your second replica. As long as no two replicas, which means a passive and a... Uh, a um, passive replica, which is not licensed, and a primary replica is not serving uh, applications uh, concurrently, you do not have to license them together. And how does that really work? So let's look at an illustration to make it easier. So before November 1st, uh, let's say you had a uh, server on, on East US, uh, server two in uh, East US, server three in West US, and server four in West US. Um, and in this case, I'm talking about Azure Virtual Machines. Uh, this applies to um, your uh, on-premises environment as well. Um, and uh, these East US and West US servers could be any on-premises data center. Um, uh, now, if you have a primary or an active replica, you need to license that with, with cores. I'm assuming each of the replicas over here have six cores. Um, so this could be running SQL Server 2008, it could be running SQL Server 
2016, or it could be running SQL Server 2019. Um, you need to license them in six cores. Now, the existing benefit, the failover HA failover benefit or the DR failover benefit allowed you to deploy a passive sync replica without assigning any licenses to them. If you needed to deploy a DR replica in another region, you would have to have six licenses, six cores, because you have six cores here. Um, if you had another DR replica, which is async in nature, you had to have another six cores. After November 1st, irrespective of which release of SQL Server you're running, as long as Server 1 is covered with software assurance, you don't have to pay for any licenses for Server 2. You don't have to pay for licenses on, on Server 3. From Server 4 and beyond, you would have to pay for the licenses. You see six licenses over here. So any additional replica beyond three, um, the third replica, uh, needs to be covered with the appropriate number of cord licenses. Um, so in, in this case, you're actually getting um, two free replicas, which means 12 core licenses. And if this is Enterprise Edition, you're actually saving a lot of money by leveraging uh, this benefit for software assurance or if you have subscription licenses, you get subscription licenses as well uh, that cover uh, the software assurance benefits. So you have 12 free Enterprise Edition licenses that can help you increase your availability and improve your uh, RPO and RTO for an existing deployment. In this example, I'm suggesting the use of always-on availability groups, which means server one is the primary replica, server two is the synchronous uh, replica for automatic failovers. Uh, server three is the async replica, which will support manual failovers, and server four is another async replica, which supports uh, manual failovers. Um, if you are on an edition of SQL Server that does not have uh, availability groups like standard edition, you can actually use log shipping. You can use log shipping and you would still get the same level of benefit. You could use uh, failover clustering with a combination of log shipping, which would have uh, the same benefit. Uh, or you could use uh, a combination of availability groups and log shipping. Um, you could use just log shipping or you could use just a backup restore to get the same DR benefit. The DR benefit is only for asynchronous data movement. Does not support, you cannot have that replica support uh, synchronous data movement and uh, support automatic failover if you needed um, to avail of the free licensing benefit for DR. So, in short summary, what you see on your slide is after November 1st, you get an additional um, core for every primary core that is covered by software assurance for SQL Server, and this applies to both on-premises uh, environments as well as SQL Server environments running on virtual machines on Azure. So, let's get another example. Um, in this example, um, I am actually using uh, a, a third replica, but in the third replica, I'm actually using uh, that for reads. So as I said before, it cannot be used for serving um, any production application on a, or any user application or any users for any kind of read or write operations. So in this case, server three has to be licensed, but since you have a server four, which had to be licensed prior to November 1st, now after November 1st, you don't need to license it because um, it is uh, covered by the DR benefit. Now the question is, what if I'm using a feature called distributed availability groups? That's another common question we get. I covered restore, I covered log shipping, but you, you don't see distributed availability groups. So let's talk about distributed availability groups. If you're using distributed availability groups, you can still avail of the same benefit only if you have a fourth replica. And in typical topologies that leverage distributed available groups, we see that the DR environment has at least uh, one or more replicas. So in this scenario, server three is the forwarder, uh, and the forwarder has to be covered with licenses, and any uh, fourth replica that you deploy uh, would not need to be covered by the DR benefit. Uh, prior to November 1st, 2019, you would have to cover it with uh, core licenses. Um, so again, this benefit applies both to Azure Virtual Machines and on-premises environments. Uh, so what about failover cluster instances? Failover cluster instances were not different 
uh, from our AT and DR before and after the new benefits were announced because in failover clusters, instances, the SQL server is only running on one particular node. Um, and if you have one failover cluster instance in my topology that, that, you're, that you see me circling my pointer on um, is essentially uh, three VMs, which are part of a Windows Server failover cluster. And I have one SQL Server failover cluster instance, which is running on node one, which means on node two and node three, there isn't a SQL Server instance that is running. In that scenario, you only needed six cores of licenses, assuming each of the virtual machines have uh, six cores each, or these could be physical servers, or these could be servers running on premises. Uh, it doesn't really matter. In that scenario, you would see that each of the SQL Server instances uh, that are running need to be licensed. In this case, Node 2 and Node 3 have no SQL Server instances, which is why they don't need to be licensed. Uh, so after November 1st, there's no change in your effective licensing position because both of them are the same. Now, in, in this same example, what if I had another failover cluster instance running? So if you had another failover cluster instance running, which is uh, you know, SQL Server, another FCI, SQL Server FCI instance running on Node 2, in this case, you would have to license it because you have now two SQL Server instances running on two different nodes of the cluster. So in this case, you needed 12 cores of licenses, assuming each of the machines had six cores each. And post November first, again, because you're serving applications from two different nodes, you need to license both. So in that scenario, uh, your licensing position for failover clusters doesn't really change much. Um, now let's look at uh, the benefit when you actually move into Azure. When you move into Azure, uh, your benefit uh, changes from basic license mobility for core-based licenses to what we call Azure Hybrid Benefit. Azure Hybrid Benefit not only lets you move your SQL Server standard and enterprise licenses into Azure, but it also gives you the ability to take your SQL Server licenses uh, and get more out of them. And what do I mean by that more? Um, let me um, cover that in the in this coming slides, but first let's understand what does it mean to move your licenses into Azure and what is this Azure Hybrid Benefit? So any customer that is leveraging software assurance uh, or you're leveraging uh, um, SQL Server subscription licenses, you have Azure Hybrid Benefit built into your program, your licensing program. If you go to SQL Virtual Machines, which means you take your SQL Server instances, migrate them into SQL Server instances running on Azure Virtual Machines, you have the ability to pay a reduced rate for SQL Server and get some of the uh, hybrid benefits uh, that I uh, talked about in the previous slide. Uh, uh, in addition to that, uh, you also have the ability to um, move your databases into a fully managed SQL Server offering. SQL, uh, SQL Server customers have the ability to take their SQL Server licenses and pay reduced rates uh, for Azure SQL database. So if you are not familiar with uh, the platform as a service offerings for, for SQL in Azure, uh, Microsoft offers uh, two different types of services. One is Azure SQL database where you have the ability to just provision a database. Microsoft manages everything for you whether it is uh, management of the instance, uh, updates, patching, the, the uh, operating system along with the host. All of that is managed by Microsoft. We provide a financially backed SLA for the uptime. And uh, uh, if you have uh, uh, disaster recovery options enabled uh, for business continuity and disaster recovery, we are one of the only clouds that actually offers you an SLA for RPO and RTO. Uh, the same is true for a managed instance offering, which is called Azure Managed Instance. Um, and what the managed instance basically is, is your SQL Server instance that you run on premises or your on, in your own data centers, but it takes that um, instance and converts it into a fully managed offering that Microsoft manages for you. Uh, both of these flavors are versionless, which means once you migrate into a platform as a service offering for Microsoft or SQL, you don't have to worry about an upgrade ever again. 
there's no version, there's no SQL Server um, 2008 or 2000 R2 end of support or end of life. Uh, it's just an evergreen uh, versionless um, platform as a service offering, which is managed by Microsoft. So let's look through what the hybrid benefits are. Apart from just getting a reduced licensing rate, what does it really mean? So the first is um, um, the conversion ratio. Once you take your SQL Server licenses into Azure as part of Azure Hybrid Benefit, your licenses actually become fungible. Um, what, does, what does that fungibility mean? Uh, what the fungibility really means is essentially you have, uh, let's say, a managed instance that is general purpose uh, of, general, of the general purpose tier. You can run an Azure SQL database managed instance and one core license of SQL Server Enterprise is valued as four weak cores of general purpose. So what it essentially means is if you have a SQL Server Enterprise license that is not used in your environment today, you can actually spawn a Azure SQL database managed instance and cover four weak cores of that um, uh, SQL managed instance with one enterprise core license um, and that would give you a reduced rate. Uh, the same thing is true for standard. Uh, if you have um, the opposite where you have free standard edition cores and you're spawning a Azure SQL database managed instance business critical tier, you can cover one V core of uh, standard, uh, sorry, one V core of the business critical um, license and get a reduced rate with four uh, SQL Server standard vCores that are not used on premises. Uh, the advantage of this is you don't need to rebuy additional licenses uh, and these licenses are applicable for virtual machines as well. So the same is true if you have, uh, let's say, a uh, one core of, uh, uh, of SQL standard edition that, that you're running uh, is can be covered by one core of uh, standard edition that you have on premises which is not being used. But what if you were running uh, 16 vCPUs or 16 virtual cores of uh, SQL Server standard edition? In that scenario, if you have just four enterprise edition cores, you can actually run 16 virtual um, cores of SQL Server standard edition on a virtual machine without having to buy standard edition licenses. So let's actually see how that looks like. Um, this is a very useful illustration to understand that table in a, in a much more simplified manner. So in this example, I have six cores of uh, SQL Server Enterprise Edition license. Um, I'm doing two things. I am deploying either six cores of SQL Server Enterprise Edition, or I'm deploying 24 cores of SQL Server Standard Edition. In this scenario, uh, it's a one is to one. So one E core can be moved into Azure. You can leverage your Azure hybrid benefit and cover six cores of Enterprise Edition. But what if I did not have Standard Edition licenses and I want to deploy uh, 24 cores of Standard Edition VMs with four virtual machines, each having six cores each? You could, you could do that. You could take these six cores of um, of EE licenses that you're not leveraging on-premises and you can move them into Azure and cover 24 cores of SQL Server Standard Edition. The same is true if you were doing Azure SQL Database Managed Instance or Azure SQL Database. Um, the one is to one would be for the business critical tier. If you're deploying the general purpose tier, your six cores could cover 24 V cores of uh, general purpose. So all in all, your existing licenses that are not being leveraged, or if you're migrating into Azure and you're shutting down or decommissioning your on-premises environments, not only your licenses have uh, the same uh, or more value in Azure, your licenses now are fungible across the different tiers of Azure SQL offerings that uh, Microsoft provides. So let's go look at um, another cool Azure hybrid benefit. Um, any enterprise migration, any customer that I talk to, one of the most common things we hear is database migrations are not a overnight thing. I can't decide to take all my applications, shut them down today, 
and spawn them all up in Azure. Migration is a journey, and most enterprises have uh, hundreds or thousands of uh, SQL Server databases and instances that take multiple months to move into a cloud. Um, cloudification uh, during the COVID era has become very, very popular, and uh, we're seeing a lot of customers accelerate their digital transformation and movement into cloud. Uh, but uh, overall, that journey is not a one-click uh, uh, overnight operation. It takes time. So what do you actually do when you're migrating in the interim? Um, if you have an environment uh, that's half in the cloud or half on-premises, or you might choose uh, to run in a hybrid manner, that's absolutely fine. A lot of our customers have part of their environments in Azure, part of their environments on-premises, and sometimes part of their environments in other clouds. But uh, if you're migrating into Azure, Microsoft Azure Hybrid Benefit Family provides you a migration benefit. And what is that migration benefit? Um, for 180 days, which is approximately six months, you get dual use rights. What does that mean? Any SQL Server license that you migrate into Azure as part of a migration, you can use uh, your licenses both on-premises and in Azure. On the left is on-premises that I'm pointing my, uh, that my pointer is hovering over. And on the right, the blue cloud is essentially Azure. So if you have 10 cores of EE running on-premises for a period of 180 days as part of a, your migration benefit under the Azure Hybrid Benefit family, you can concurrently run 10 virtual cores in Azure um, without incurring an additional cost. After 180 days, you have to choose whether you want to run the 10 cores on-premises, which means you need to buy 10 V cores worth of license for Azure, or you could shut down your 10 V cores because your migration is complete. Then the 10 cores uh, have now migrated over into Azure as part of Azure Hybrid Benefit. You get 10 V cores worth of compute, whether if it is 10 V cores of EE, then you get um, 10 V cores of EE or general or business critical. If you want to run standard edition VMs or if you want to run um, uh, a general purpose uh, uh, platform as a service or Azure SQL database instances, then the 10 becomes uh, 40 V cores. But after 180 days, you have to choose and it is basically um, a or benefit. But for the first 180 days, it's an and benefit where you can run concurrently in both environments. So this is another great benefit that uh, we've seen customers leverage for complex uh, migrations. And uh, this is super beneficial because you don't need to buy uh, your licenses upfront. And as you move through the migration, you don't have to pay uh, for both environments while you're doing the migration. The other cool benefit that I really like, and you would Remember this from a previous slide that I was uh, talking to uh, as part of the pre uh, presentation uh, is the hybrid failover benefit. So in this case, uh, let's say you have an on-premises environment where you have three servers. Um, server one is covered by software assurance. Um, each of the servers in this illustration has six cores. Uh, server one is the primary replica. Uh, server two is the passive replica. Server 3 is uh, another passive replica. And Server 4 uh, is basically a SQL Server instance running on an Azure Virtual Machine. And it's a passive replica and is used for DR. So uh, in this kind of a topology, um, you're essentially optimizing for multiple site failures. If Server 1 fails, you can go over to Server 2. If Server 2 fails, you can go over to Server 3. If all of these data centers fail, you could go into the cloud. Uh, this is a very common paradigm that we're seeing a lot of customers adopt where they are choosing cloud to be their DR environment, where you can scale up and scale down as many number of times you want without having to incur an additional cost of uh, pre-provisioning the infrastructure, which is a cost, buying and, and maintaining data centers is an exceptionally high cost and a huge capital expenditure and we are seeing more and more customers uh, leverage the cloud for setting up their DR environments where they don't have to spend capital for provisioning data centers 
especially in regions where they don't already have data center capacity or is, or even in regions where they have data center capacity but uh, they're running short and they don't want to keep um, VMs or physical things occupied waiting for a disaster event. So the cloud becomes a, a great uh, motion or a great option for leveraging uh, your uh, leveraging uh, capacity, compute capacity or storage capacity for disaster events. And the ability for the cloud to elastically scale up or down gives you the pricing uh, flexibility to uh, pay for what you need now. And if in case a disaster happens, um, all of us hope that disaster doesn't happen, but in case it does, you're prepared and you can scale up in a very short amount of time if all of your production needs to move uh, to the cloud in the event of a disaster. So let's, let's look through how this actually really works. So starting from November 1st, 2019, things would have changed, but uh, on November, prior to November 1st, whether you were running SQL Server 2019 or you were running SQL Server 2016, doesn't really matter. Uh, this benefit applies to all SQL Server releases as long as Server 1, which is the primary, is covered with software assurance or with SQL Server subscription licenses. So how would this actually work? Uh, let's look at the before case. Um, you would have six core licenses. Your passive replica benefit would allow you six free cores on the secondary server, which could either be for A or DR. Um, your uh, server three would need to be licensed completely between six cores for this example. And server four, which was an Azure, would need to be licensed again for six cores. Um, and you could use any uh, data movement uh, feature in SQL Server. You could use uh, log shipping, you could use database mirroring. Uh, since database mirroring is deprecated, we don't recommend using that. Uh, you could use backup restore, you could use always on availability groups, or you could use a combination of uh, all of these features. But as long as all of the three replicas are passive, um, prior to November 1st, 2019, you would have to pay for server three and server four, server two was free. Um, after you go over and you still maintain software assurance um, post November 1st, 2019, or you're covering the primary replica with uh, um, core-based licenses using uh, SQL Server subscriptions or software assurance, obviously the primary needs to be licensed. Server two does not need to be licensed, that's an old benefit. Server three, no longer needs to be licensed because this is your, if this is for asynchronous data movement and for DR only, then that's free licenses for you. Server four, because this is on Azure VM, in the past example in this presentation, you'd have noticed that server four had to be licensed because it was the fourth replica uh, sitting entirely on Azure, where all four replicas are on Azure or all four replicas were on premises. In this case, you have three replicas that are sitting on premises and the fourth replica is sitting on Azure. In this case, this hybrid DR benefit uh, removes the need for you to run on, uh, on a licensed server. You get six free cores for hybrid DR. And that's an awesome benefit because now what would have needed 18 licenses only requires six. So you're actually getting 18 cores of SQL Server licenses for free. And that's a pretty awesome benefit um, starting November 1st for any release of SQL Server that's covered with um, software assurance or with SQL Server subscription licenses. So let's look at another benefit of the Elasticity model. The Elasticity model that um, I was talking to is, uh, is for, in this case, the example that I'm showing is for read scale up. So you could actually have a hybrid environment where you have server one and server two uh, sitting on premises um, and they're using always on availability groups for, uh, for having a passive sync secondary for failover. So you need to license for, for six licenses for server one. For server two, you don't need to license them at all. Um, and in this example, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using uh, server two and server four and deploying them on West US and Azure um, and I'm using uh, them as uh, read replicas using transactional replication. Um, in this case, you can actually 
not license them with any SQL Server core licenses. You can just license them as pay as you go. Um, when you're running SQL Server in Azure, you also have the option of paying RD license fees, uh, and that is called pay as you go licenses. And uh, the moment you shut down those VMs, you don't need to pay for those licenses. They, you only pay for them as long as you're running them. So it's an hourly based licensing model when you use pay as you go. So in this case, if you ha if you know for a specific time period, let's say it's a month end, um, you can choose to provision them with, let's say, two cores and serve them for reads, or you could have 16 cores running here and you could spawn them up at a specific period of time, do the reads, shut them down again, so you only pay for licenses for the amount of time they're running. So if both of these servers were running for four hours each on a given day, you'd only pay for four hours of SQL Server licenses uh, for that day. So that's a pretty awesome way of combining pay-as-you-go licensing and your SQL Server on-premises licensing to optimize your cost of ownership. So the question is, where do you go to learn more? Um, we have a bunch of videos um, on aka.ms SQL licensing videos. You will see all the SQL Server licensing videos that we've published uh, over the last year. Uh, the SQL Server 2019 license guide, while it says SQL Server 2019 license guide, it applies to all releases of SQL Server um, and the software assurance benefits are described in detail and it also has a link to the product use terms. Um, SQL Server licensing um, is obviously a complex topic and the hope is that through this presentation um, I've had the opportunity to talk through some of the most common questions we get and I hope that uh, this has been really useful for you and you've been able to get uh, some of the uh, common benefits that SQL Server licensing offers and how software assurance and Azure hybrid benefit can really make your licensing uh, cost uh, go down uh, by a lot. So now let's look at if you really move to Azure um, and uh, if you took your SQL Server licensing benefits, how would that actually work? Um, so let me switch over to my Azure portal and show you a view of um, what that would look like. So. Um, in this scenario, what you see here is uh, basically a uh, SQL Server Virtual Machine tab. And I'm just going to focus on the license type. Uh, so when you go to uh, the SQL Server um, Virtual Machine license tab, you will see that there are three different types of licenses. In this case, I'm using Azure Hybrid Benefit. Um, there's also an HA and DR license type, and there's a Pay-as-you-go license type. Uh, when you choose Pay-as-you-go, you have the ability to choose for the addition. Uh, we, we support uh, um, switching of additions on the fly. So one of the great things about running um, SQL Server virtual machines and Azure is you have the ability to uh, go from a SQL Server Enterprise Edition to a developer edition to not incur any licensing costs at all. This is really awesome when you're switching between dev and production. Um, On-premises, we see a lot of customers uh, create multiple pipelines to switch from developer to uh, enterprise edition. In this case, you can actually take an entire enterprise edition VM and switch it over develop to developer as long as no production applications are, are supported for the, from that VM. Um, and with pay-as-you-go, you pay by the R, so whenever you shut down a VM, you're not paying any licensing costs. The other option is, Azure Hybrid Benefit. In this case, what you're essentially doing is you're basically taking your on-premises licenses and you're moving them into Azure, and you're paying uh, your uh, your licensing fees for the virtual machine through your on-premises licenses. And again, uh, the Azure Hybrid Benefit basically offsets the SQL Server VM licensing costs for the IP. You still pay for for compute and um, and storage and networking, but the SQL Server license cost are reduced or you don't have to pay for them on a virtual machine. If you're running on um, SQL Server platform as a service, you're, you're paying for the licenses. The last one is the HADR. Uh, I talked about the high availability and disaster recovery benefits and I also talked about um, the SQL Server uh, hybrid DR benefits. So whenever you have a passive replica which qualifies for any of these benefits, you can come into the, the uh, SQL Server 
licensing tab and you can check the HADR toggle, click on I confirm and you get those benefits. So the question is how do you actually get them? So you can actually go to SQL Server Virtual Machines um, and you can go to uh, add and what that does for you is it, it gives you an option. You have three options. You have databases, managed instance and virtual machines. So when you click on um, let's say a single database for a uh, SQL database you have the option of creating a single database and um, um, once you do that you have the ability to go through all of the options to create the SQL database and uh, you can choose any number of um, um, any number of uh, options that you want you can select the group you can select the database server name and you can um, set up the VM now in addition to that you also have like let me go back to deployment option you have the ability to do select select managed instances you can create a SQL server a SQL Azure SQL database managed instance over here and again um, you can choose uh, what managed instance you want and what you'll notice here is the Azure hybrid benefit uh, if you click on this you get a reduced cost for the managed instance um, and the same thing when you do with uh, when you do the same with um, with the virtual machine in this case let me pick a SQL Server 2019 Enterprise uh, Edition VM and the value here because you're managing the virtual machine and it's not a platform as a service offering you also have the ability to select Azure Hybrid Benefit for Windows Server which reduces your um, licensing cost for Windows Server. So in this case I'm just going to talk about the SQL Server part of it when you're selecting the SQL Server license you have the ability to uh, basically select the SQL Server license type and if you select yes um, it will ask you for a confirmation that you actually have licenses and you can actually reduce your licensing cost. So what you saw here is the, um, the options you can go to a create database you have the option of applying this at a database level so in this case it says in in the database level it says yes again this is the hybrid benefit um, it applies to databases it applies to managed instance it applies to VMs uh, and you can save uh, costs for your SQL Server licensing uh, in that manner and it also gives you um, you know once you select uh, uh, yes and no you also get to see over here um, the cost summary that shows you uh, how much cost you're actually saving uh, and uh, and what this does for you is it allows you to estimate how much you'll actually save by applying Azure Hybrid Benefit to each of your uh, databases. Now the question is when you create a database or a managed instance this is automatically available to you. What if you had SQL virtual machines that were already created but you weren't aware of the benefit and you had um, not leveraged them accurately. You could go into a new feature that we have announced called automatic SQL Server VM registration. You could go into that option and um, select the subscription and click on register and it would register all the SQL virtual machines that you have in your subscription and you would see a view like this uh, that you see on my uh, on your screens right now. And what that would do is it would allow you to do grouping and you could group by license type and you could get a summary view. So what you see over here is I'm showing you a location summary which shows you all the different uh, SQL VMs that I've deployed in different regions. Um, and um, if I click by license type and look at bar chart, it'll show you that I have 15 SQL VMs that are pay-as-you-go and I have 11 SQL VMs that are leveraging Azure Heavy Benefit. By just by looking at this view, you would know how many uh, pay-as-you-go VMs versus how many Azure Hybrid Benefit VMs you're running. And it lets you manage your SQL Server licensing costs through a single dashboard, but all of the SQL VMs have to be registered first for, for the SQL Virtual Machines tab to show you what are the different licenses you're leveraging for your existing virtual machines. For 
Azure SQL Database Managed Instance or Azure SQL Database. You don't need to do this because uh, you're deploying everything through uh, a, a workflow that uh, Microsoft provides and there is no self-installation of, uh, of SQL Server on VMs that, uh, uh, that's available for our PaaS offerings. So in that scenario, you can, you're either deploying using Azure Hybrid Benefit or you're deploying using pay-as-you-go. There's no third option of self-installed. Um, and in, in, the, uh, in the platform as a service scenario, you can always go back and switch between your, your licensing modes as you see fit. Uh, so again, going back uh, to our presentation, um, these are the resource links that you see on your, on your screen right now. Um, you know, please feel free to leverage them to know more about uh, our licensing scenarios and what additional um, capabilities we offer through SQL Server licensing. Um, and um, I thank um, you know, Data Platform Summit uh, and Ahmed Bunsel and his team for giving me this opportunity to talk to you about the different licensing options for SQL Server and how you can leverage uh, you know, SQL Server licensing to reduce your costs while running SQL Server in your own data centers or on Azure. Um, and um, you know, uh, please feel free to leverage the Twitter hashtag uh, you have some uh, options to win some cool prizes. And uh, once again, thank you to the sponsors and the organizers uh, for taking the time to put together a virtual summit. A lot of effort goes into it. And uh, above all, thank you everyone for joining and thank you for watching the session. Um, have a great day.